Good morning, everyone. Today is June 6th, Saturday, and Father Maples will be celebrating Mass here in a couple of moments. And I just noticed a misprint on our little list up here, so I need to pull that up real quick. And the Mass he'll be offering will be for the reposed or for the deceased uh, parishioners of St. John Newman. We'll begin with the Angelus, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And the Word was made flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Today's <clears throat> patristic reading from the Office of Readings is from an, the Exposition on John by St. Thomas Aquinas. Christ himself is the way, and therefore, he says, I am the way. This certainly is eminently right, for through him we have access to the Father. Since this way is not separate from its end, but joined to it, he adds the truth and the life. Thus he is himself at once both the way and the goal. In his human nature he is the way, and in his divine nature he is the goal. Therefore, speaking as man, he says, I am the way. And speaking as God, he adds, the truth and the life. These two words are an apt description of this goal. For this goal is the object of human desire, and a man desires two things above all. In the first place, he wants to know the truth, which is peculiar to him. And secondly, he wants to continue to exist, which is common to all things. Christ is the way by which we come to know truth, though he is also that truth. Lead me, O Lord, in truth, and I shall enter into your way. Christ is also the way to come to life, though he is also that life. You have made known the ways of life, says scripture. Therefore, the designated, he designated the end of his way by truth and life, about which we have spoken above with reference to Christ. First he himself is life, for life was in him. Then he is truth, because he was the light of men, and light is truth. If then you are looking for the way by which you should go, take Christ, because he himself is the way. This is the way, walk in it. And Augustine says, make man your way and you shall arrive at God. It is better to limp along the way than stride along off the way. For a man who limps along the way, even if he only makes slow progress, comes to the end of the way. But the one who is off the way, the more quickly he runs, the further away he is from his goal. If you are looking for a goal, hold fast to Christ, because he himself is the truth. Where we desire to be, my mouth shall reflect on the truth. If you are looking for a resting place, hold fast to Christ, because he himself is the life. Whoever finds me finds life and receives salvation from the Lord. Therefore, hold fast to Christ if you wish to be safe, 
you will not be able to go astray because he is the way. He who remains with him does not wander in trackless places. He is on the right path. Moreover, he cannot be deceived because he is the truth and he teaches every truth. And he says, for this was I born and for this I have come to bear witness to the truth. Nor can he be disturbed because he is both life and the giver of life. For he says, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Coming together to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we entrust ourselves to God and ask for the gift of mercy. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, whose providence never fails in its design, keep from us, we humbly beseech you, all that might harm us, and grant all that works for our good through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingly power, proclaim the word. Be persistent whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Convince, reprimand, encourage through all patience and teaching. For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine, but following their own desires and insatiable curiosity will accumulate teachers and will stop listening to the truth and will be diverted to myths. But you, be self-possessed in all circumstances, put up with hardship, perform the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. For I am already being poured out like a libation, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the first judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. The word of the Lord. I will sing of your salvation. My mouth shall be filled with your praise, with your glory day by day. Cast me not off in my old age, as my strength fails, forsake me not. Sing of your salvation. But I will always hope and praise you evermore and more, 
My mouth shall declare your justice, day by day your salvation. I will sing of your salvation. I will treat of the mighty works of the Lord. O God, I will tell of your singular justice. O God, you have taught me from my youth. Until the present, I proclaim your wondrous deeds. I will sing of your salvation. So will I give you thanks with music on the lyre. For your faithfulness, O oh my God, I will sing your praises with a harp, O oh Holy One of Israel. I will sing of your salvation. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. In the course of his teaching, Jesus said, Beware of the scribes who go about or in long robes and accept greetings in the marketplaces, seats of honor in synagogues, and places of honor at banquets. They devour the houses of widows and as a pretext receive, recite lengthy prayers. They will receive a very severe condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowd put money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow also came and put in two small coins worth a few cents. Calling his disciples to himself, he said to them, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contributors to the treasury. For they have all contributed from their surplus wealth, but she, from her poverty, has contributed all she had, her whole livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. In St. Paul's second letter to Timothy, he says, Be persistent, whether it is inconvenient, or convenient. How often do we make that distinction in our lives as we live about our daily vocation? Whether that's the vocation of a married person, consecrated religious, ordained, the vocation of a teacher or a godparent, or just the vocation that we all have as living as a member of a community. How often do we find ourselves saying, well, I will act like a Christian in this case because it's easy. My wife like a Christian in this exchange because it's convenient for me. Well, or how often do we think afterwards, well, it was really hard for me to keep my temper in check. God wouldn't understand that I lost my temper. Well, God wouldn't like this person either if, if he had to live next to this person. So I think God will overlook the fact that I have no patience with that person, that I refrain from charity in living next to this person. What is it about the gift of the widow that is so impressive, so such an example for us all to give? Well, she has given all that she had, says our Lord. She's not given the surplus. She's not given the leftovers. She's given from her very center, from the core of her being. She's given all that she has. And that becomes difficult. What part of us do we hold on to? What part of ourselves do we refuse to give over to God? Maybe because it's inconvenient. Maybe because it hurts a little. Maybe because we think, I can't live without this. Maybe it's some vice that we hold on to and convince ourselves, well, you know, God will overlook this one. Maybe it's a bad habit. Maybe it's a person in our lives. Maybe it's a relationship that is unhealthy. Maybe it's some act or some part of our work lives that we say, okay, well, you know, I've got to do this for my work, even though it's inconsistent with the teachings of my faith, so hmm, God will understand. 
In those cases, we are giving only of our surplus. We are giving only the leftovers. We are giving only what we can live without or think we can live without and holding on to what we can't imagine living without. I wonder if as this poor widow came in and gave two small coins, if she did it with a smile on her face, I imagine probably so. This is probably a woman of faith, but I bet somewhere in her heart there was some fear, some anxiety. Okay, well, if I give these two coins now, how will I brought buy bread this afternoon? So she pushes through that anxiety. She pushes through that fear. She says, okay, I will give what I have, and I will trust in God, and God will provide. Being a saint or doing holy things or giving all that we have or giving from the core of our being or living our vocation, living as disciples, it doesn't mean we'll never have fear. It doesn't mean that it will all come easy. It means we push through that fear. We push through that anxiety, that uncertainty, that ambiguity about what will happen next. And we commit ourselves to God and say, okay, God, this is how I am called to live. This is what you need me to do. I'm a little worried about this because I am human. But be with me. Help me. Help me to get fully of myself. And that's trust. And that's faith. And that's the heart of discipleship. So as we go about our day, this day and every day, reflect about what God is asking us to do that we really don't want to do or that we're afraid to do. Maybe you have an opportunity to reach out to someone from whom you're estranged. We don't know what that fear is like. Push through that. Give that fear over to God. And say, okay, well, I will do what God needs me to do and what God has called me to do this day, even when it's difficult, even when it really causes me to struggle. And that's where we most fully abandon ourselves to God. We entrust our needs and the needs of others to God as we offer our petitions for ourselves and for one another. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for his intentions this month and for his well-being, we pray to the Lord. For those who guide and shepherd us in this parish and in this diocese, we pray to the Lord. That we will have the courage to push through our fear and our anxiety, to follow along with the will of God and to abandon ourselves to God's will. We pray to the Lord. For the poor, for the unemployed, for the underemployed, for those who have been affected in economic ways by the, re by the current pandemic, for them and for their needs, we pray to the Lord. For continued protection during this time of pandemic, for those who are ill, for those who care for those who are ill, for those who put their lives and health in, in dangerous way as they go about living their lives, especially as they work to care for the needs of others, we pray to the Lord. For those who will die this day, for the recently departed, and for all the souls in purgatory, that they will rejoice with all the saints forever and ever. We pray to the Lord. And for those petitions that remain in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. May the most holy, the most just, the most lovable will of God be done, praised and exalted above all forever. Thy will be done, O Lord, thy will be done. Blessed be the name of the Lord, now and ever and forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Trusting in your compassion, O Lord, we come eagerly with our offerings to your sacred altar, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word, for whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with all the angels and saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving things broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Richard our Bishop and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant unto us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. As I cannot, at this moment, receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already present there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Govern by your Spirit, we pray, O Lord, those you feed with the body and blood of your Son, that professing you not just in word or in speech, but also in works and in truth, we may merit to enter the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. As you first ascended, go forth, glorifying the Lord by your lives. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our with the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, the Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power 